There were once many types of humans on this planet, but today only one remains. We weren't always alone. For over two million years, this planet was shared, walked, lived in by creatures that looked a lot like you. They shaped tools, built fires, hunted in groups, cared for their sick, buried their dead, some even painted. And then they vanished. No battles, no headlines, no monuments, just silence. Most people only know one name, the Neanderthals, but they were just one of many. The truth is, Earth used to be home to at least nine human species, maybe more. We're still finding new ones today. Some left bones, others left only traces, and some might have never been found at all. So who were these other humans? And what happened to them? Why are we the only ones left? Let me take you into a journey where we will discover the other human species and what causes them to vanish from the face of the Earth. In the vast, ancient landscapes of Africa, it did not begin with us. A remarkable journey began, but with one of our earliest ancestors, a species known as Homo erectus. Nearly two million years ago, Homo erectus emerged, tall, strong, highly adaptable. He wasn't just surviving, he was learning. He was taming the world around him. He controlled fire, not just for warmth or cooking, but for protection, light, and survival. He crafted stone tools, built primitive shelters, and perhaps most significantly, he moved. Homo erectus became the first human species to leave Africa, to wander far beyond the land of his birth. His footprints reached into Asia, down to Indonesia, and across into parts of Europe, long before modern humans ever walked the Earth. In the frozen wilderness of Ice Age Europe, another human story took shape. The Neanderthals. They were built for cold, heavy bones, powerful muscles, broad noses to warm the icy air. They hunted giant beasts. They lived in family groups, cooperated, endured. But they were more than just survivors. They made complex tools, they shaped ornaments, shells, teeth. They buried their dead with care. Some show signs of healing, broken bones mended. It means they looked after each other. It means they had compassion. Many believe they had language, not just sounds, but the beginnings of speech, maybe even song. These were intelligent, emotional beings, not so different from us. But not all of our relatives left behind complete remains. Some are known only from fragments. In a cave in Siberia, a tooth was found. Later, a finger bone, then part of a jaw. From these scraps, a new human species was identified, the Denisovans. We don't know what they looked like, no skulls, no full skeletons, but their DNA survived, locked inside those fragments. And that DNA told a powerful story the Denisovans lived, they thrived, and they interbred with us. Their genes are still with us today, especially in people from Melanesia and parts of East and Southeast Asia. One Denisovan gene even helps some modern humans breathe at high altitudes. It still protects people in the mountains of Tibet, though almost nothing of them remains. Their legacy continues in our blood. On a remote island in Indonesia lived another kind of human, Homo floresiensis, sometimes called the Hobbit. They stood just over three feet tall, with brains no larger than a grapefruit. But despite their size, they were capable. They crafted tools, they cooked food, and they survived among deadly predators, including Komodo dragons. Some researchers believe they lived as recently as 12,000 years ago. Others think they may have lasted even longer. Villagers nearby speak of little people, forest dwellers with strange habits. Legends, perhaps. But legends often begin with truth. And then, in 2019, another surprise. Deep inside a cave in the Philippines, scientists discovered yet another species, Homo luzonensis. Like the hobbits, they were small-bodied, but anatomically distinct, different from any other humans we've known. Until that moment, no one even suspected they existed. It was another revelation, a reminder that human history is not a straight line. It is a tangled web, full of dead ends, surprises, and hidden paths. And then there's Homo naledi, discovered in South Africa. They had small brains, no bigger than a chimps, but what they did defied expectation. They buried their dead, not in open ground, but deep inside narrow cave shafts, in total darkness. Bodies were carried down deliberately. Why? Was it ritual? Was it grief? Or was it something else we cannot yet comprehend? At least nine different species of human beings once lived on this planet. Each one unique, each one extraordinary. All are now gone. Around 70,000 years ago, something changed. A new species began to emerge from Africa, smaller than Neanderthals, more agile, 
more adaptable, Homo sapiens, we spread quickly across deserts, through forests, over mountains, and onto islands. We reached every corner of the world, and wherever we went, the others disappeared, not always through violence, but gradually. Some likely perished with the changing climate. Ice came and went. Ecosystems shifted. Food sources vanished. Others may have been outcompeted. We hunted more efficiently. We cooperated in larger groups. We adapted faster. And some weren't lost. They were absorbed. We interbred with them. Today, many people still carry traces of their DNA. Neanderthal, Denisovan. The past is written in our blood. So how did we become the last ones standing? We weren't the strongest, not the tallest, not the fastest, not even the smartest in terms of brain size. But we had something else. Language. Structured, symbolic language. It allowed us to plan, to warn, to teach, to deceive, to imagine. We passed down stories and with them, knowledge. We began to paint, to sing, to create meaning. And meaning was power. It helped us build tribes, cultures, religions, civilizations. By the time the first seeds were planted around 12,000 years ago, we were the only human species left, alone, the last of our kind. Or were we just lucky? Did we endure because we could imagine better? Or because we could destroy better? We'll probably never know, but one thing is certain. We carry the past inside us. Our DNA is a living archive, not just Homo sapiens, but Neanderthal, Denisovan, Erectus, Naledi. We are the last branch of a once flourishing tree. And the silence they left behind still echoes. We live in cities now. We fly across oceans. We build machines that can think, but we remain fragile, one species, one thread from a much greater tapestry. We like to believe we were meant to be here, that we earned it, that we deserve to survive. But maybe we were simply the ones left when the lights went out. And now, as we begin to edit our genes, as we create intelligence beyond our own, as we charge toward a future we can barely comprehend, we should remember we weren't always alone. And we might not always be 